Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Bob Shermer and Hi Anna. Tess. And I saw Susie, James, and I don't Hi, know Holy Humor Sunday. I don't know who that is. We should ask them. Joy. Whoever Holy Humor Sunday is, if you could identify yourselves, that'd be great. Hi Dick and Doris. Hi Jane and Norman. Yeah. Hi Brenda. And the other Brenda. Good morning, Carol Buckley and Cindy Engel. Good morning, Mr. Suplee. Hi, Don and Betty Ann. Good morning, McGuckins and Lithia and John Pratt and John and Suzanne. Hi, Fred. Hi, Gail and Joe. Hi, Edie. Hi, Barb and Ed. Ellen and Bob. George and Jean, good morning. Hello, Permars. Good morning, Marlowe. Good morning, Liz. And Rosie. And Ted. Good morning, and Janet. Hi, Joan. Good morning, Joe Scott. Thank you for my books. Joe Scott dropped off a bag of books for me. Hi, Joan, Suzanne. Hi, Katie. Hi, Karen. Hi, Ed and Jackie. Hi, Lil. Oh, Annalee Coringle signed in. That's good. Did she? Oh, that must be Gary. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, Nishi. Good morning, Chief King. And Noose. And Pat's horses. I believe we found out that was Brenda Lane last week, I think. Good morning, Pizza Plea. Good morning, Robin, Robin. It's so good to have you all with us on this. Good morning, Sharon. Hello. Happy birthday, Sue. Good morning, Morris and Bonnie. Good morning. Hi, Bill and Mary Lou. And Susan. Good morning oh. to the Cheeks. Good morning, Penny. Got a lot of Nancys. Good morning to all the Nancys. Good morning, Morgan. Nancys. Out of Nancy's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think, Annalie? We got 70 people. I see we got some good mornings in the chats. Oh, gotta love that. Pat's Horses is Frank Mendenhall. Frank Mendenhall, okay. And we don't know who Holy Humor Sunday is, if you can put that in the chat, too. But anyway, welcome to all 71 of you. Annalie and I are so happy that you're with us. I'm gonna share the screen. So I had kind of a crazy week, kind of stressful with, you know, Gary and just COVID and all of this stuff. And so I ended up taking Friday off and going down to my family's house on Rock Hall. And um, good morning, Robin. And it was just wonderful. It was just great. And it was nice to know that young me and Gabby were taking care of Unionville folk if they needed it. So thank you to all of you for the good wishes on my day off. It was wonderful. So it's good to be here. It's nice to be back in worship. I feel very restored and very happy. So good to see you all. Oh, that moment whenever you can't figure out how to turn the slide. <laughs> Will you please join me in sharing our call to worship this morning? Blessing God, you bless us richly. Loving God, you love us wholly. Forgiving God, you forgive us entirely. Calling God, you call us tenderly. Nurturing God, you nurture us patiently. Challenging God, you challenge us fiercely. Moving God, you move us profoundly. God of our lives, we invite you among us and we listen for your word. Will you please join me, your hearts and your minds together in a time of confession. 
The God revealed to us in the pages of scripture is a welcoming and inclusive God who directs us to love one another. We seek to remove all the barriers that keep us from that love. Come now to confess all that separates you from others and from God. Will you please join me in this unison prayer of confession? God of grace, we confess to you every wrong, all the damage we have done that cannot be undone. We confess to you unkind words that cannot be taken back, opportunities to do good that were passed by, actions that have caused permanent damage. These sins grieve us bitterly, and we acknowledge that our hope lies in you. Help us accept your gift of grace and mercy, letting go of the past and living boldly into a new future, forgiven and made new. Amen. Friends, beloved ones, hear these words of assurance. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy who forgives us all our sins strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. We are forgiven and free. Amen. Thank you all for your kind patience. This is Live Your Love. It sounds like I saw a couple people in the chat saying that they can't hear anything. So I'm going to try this again. Thank you so much for saying something. I would rather have you say it and let me try again. Okay. Hmm. Thank you all. This is such a, uh, it's amazing how we can keep doing this over and over again, week after week, and it still sometimes feels like the first time. All right.
thank you so much to Chris and Susie and Dan. That piece is just so beautiful. It gets more beautiful as it goes on. Will you pray with me? Guide us, O oh God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime, you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I want to preach today about hope, not a sentimental, misleading hope that politicians all over the world, on both sides of the aisle, bandy about, but the hope that makes us human, the hope that fuels the imagination and gives us the vision to see the world, not as it is, but as God means the world to be. Most of you know that I serve as the police chaplain for three local police departments. And in March, as the COVID-19 pandemic was becoming a reality we were dealing with, I was meeting with the three police departments to make plans. We prepared for the first domino to fall, an increase in domestic violence. We prepared for the second domino to fall, mental health issues and increases in suicides. And finally, we prepared for the third domino, civil unrest. We thought that that might happen in July or August as the economic implications of COVID-19 were felt and the temperature went up and frustration built. And then George Floyd was killed. And I want to be clear that every single officer with whom I serve immediately called it out for the crime it was, a heinous act committed by someone who never should have worn the badge. And civil unrest took hold of our nation. In the midst of this, I lamented, oh my God, what comes next? The chief answered, hope, it will be all we have. We see hope unleashed throughout the gospel. Listen to these words from Mark. When Jesus and the disciples got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region 
and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard Jesus was. So Jesus is in the midst of his boat ministry. He's sailing from place to place, from one side of the lake to the other. And everywhere that Jesus and the disciples rode the boat, hopefulness followed in the wake. In these early days of the Jesus movement, the true nature of the kingdom of God was being revealed. A hope that the world is different from it appears was being unleashed. We see that the sick are hopeful for a cure, the hungry for a meal, the tearful are hopeful for a hearty laugh, and the prisoner hopeful for a second chance. And every time Jesus steps onto dry land, he's mobbed, for he embodies the prophecy that the naked will be clothed, the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free. And wherever he went, the Bible tells us, in the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The hope that Jesus embodies so overwhelms the people who encounter him that they run with abandon to the people they don't know who are too sick to walk. They carry them to the place where Jesus might be, where they might reach out and touch the fringe of his garment to be healed. The word fringe is important. Jesus is traveling along the fringes. He is not at the center of power in Jerusalem, but in the far countryside of Galilee. He is not among the elite and the ruling class, but among the people of the fringe, those who are ruled by the elite, those who might be oppressed. Jesus brings them hope that the oppression will end, not because the power in the center will change, but that a new power, the power of the kingdom of God will take over from the fringes and the edges and move to the center to make all things new. So it always is with the hope that fuels the religious imagination that God reigns and that peace and justice are possible. In the height of the fight against apartheid in South Africa, an interviewer asked Archbishop Desmond Tutu if he was optimistic about the chances of a nonviolent movement succeeding in getting Nelson Mandela released from prison and giving blacks the vote. What do I have to be optimistic about, Tutu replied. But then he added, but I believe we, we will succeed. I am a prisoner of hope. That's an allusion from the prophet Zechariah who says, return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today, I declare that I will restore to you double. That sentiment echoes throughout our scriptures. I particularly like the Apostle Paul's observation about hope in God's kingdom and Christ's resurrection in his first letter to the Corinthians. Whoever plows should plow in hope and whoever threshes should thresh in hope of a share in the crop. The most hopeful thing I think you can do is plant a seed. The Catechism of the Episcopal Church says, what is the Christian hope? And the answer is, the Christian hope is to live with confidence in newness and fullness of life, to await the coming of Christ in glory and the completion of God's purpose for the world. But what about realism? Benjamin Franklin said, he that lives on hope will die fasting. We cannot live on hope alone, but I've learned in my 52 year study of being human that we cannot live without hope either. To live without hope is to only see the world in its brokenness as it is and not to view the world as God wants it to be. Without hope, realism devolves into pessimism or worse, cynicism. Existence can be bleak and life can appear meaningless. Realism serves as the handmaiden of oppression while hope is the currency of the poor. Hope purchases optimism for the oppressed when the ruling despots all over the world use force and injustice to make realism sour. In the book, The Hunger Games, there's a telling exchange between the despot President Snow, who fears that Katniss Everdeen's victory will foment revolution in far-flung districts. And he has an exchange with his game master, Seneca Crane. The game master is the one that makes the games serve the needs of the oppressive empire. President Snow says, hope. It is the only thing stronger than fear. A little hope is effective. A lot of hope is dangerous. A spark is fine as long as it's contained. 
The game master says so. And President Snow replies, so contain it. In the gospel, we see that Snow's in every despot's greatest fear, that hope, rather than being contained, is unleashed. But what about you and me right now this morning? What does this mean for us in our daily life that may be long on realism and short on hope? There are people here this morning who need hope. And there are people here this morning who can give hope. And I suppose we all live on both sides of that equation at various times. I want everyone who feels hopeless today to feel that they are in the right place. When you need hope, find someone who has it. And when you have hope, give it away. Hope inherently causes the person otherwise concerned with their own life to consider others, to worry not just about what is best for one, but what is good for all. Hope unleashes generosity and cooperation, where realism easily encourages hoarding and independence. Without hope, there's little motivation to follow the commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves. Hope is a spiritual discipline, a spiritual muscle that needs to be exercised. When cynicism starts to overtake, try hope. When sarcasm seems the easiest reply to the abundant hope of another, let it pass and get on board. Sometimes we just need to be hopeful because good things will flow from that. Hopefulness doesn't calculate what is possible. It imagines what is necessary and gives the fuel to achieve it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. People of God, will you please join me in reciting this affirmation of faith together, the Creed of Hope. I believe in God, the God of all creeds, with all their truths, but above all in the God that rises from the dead to become part of life. I believe in the God that accompanies me along every step of my path on this earth many times walking behind me, watching me and suffering mistakes, other times walking beside me, talking to me and teaching me, and other times walking ahead of me, guiding and marking my pace. I believe in the God of flesh and blood, Jesus Christ, the God who lived in my sin and tried on my shoes, the God who walked in my ways and knows the, of lights and shadows, the God who ate and starved, who had a home and suffered loneliness, who was praised and condemned, kissed and spat on, loved and hated. The God who went to parties and funerals, the God who laughed and cried. I believe in the God who is attentive today, who looks at the world and sees the hatred that segregates, divides, sets people aside, hurts and kills, sees the bullets piercing the flesh and the blood of innocent people flowing on the earth, who sees the hand that dips into another's pocket, stealing what somebody needs to eat, who sees the judge that favors the highest bidder, the truth and justice of hypocrites, who sees the dirty rivers and the dead fish, the toxic substances destroying the earth and piercing the sky, who sees the future mortgaged and man's debt growing. I believe in God who sees all this, and keeps on crying. But I also believe in God who sees a mother giving birth, a life born from pain, who sees two children paying, a seed playing, a seed growing, who sees a flower blooming out of the debris, a new beginning, who sees three crazy women clamoring for justice, an illusion that doesn't die, who sees the sun rising every morning, a time of opportunities. I believe in God who sees all this and laughs because in spite of it all, there is hope.
while you pull up that piece that I'm very excited to hear by Bear, Bill and Mary Lou, I just want to say, Annalie, that I needed to hear your sermon today and that that creed that you found was just so gorgeous. Thank you. And please feel free to chat if you don't hear it, like you did for the first one. But here we go. Sorry, it was a little, for those of you that thought it was a little too loud, sorry about that. Um, we're still working out the bugs, but somehow Bill and Mary Lou, just the two of them, did all four parts in the trumpet and all of that. So I know all three churches have some really, really talented musicians, and I love hearing all the different music. So thank you, Bill and Mary Lou. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. Our prayer of dedication, I'd like to thank everybody for their continued um, generosity. I'm sure all three, all, all three churches are continuing to do the good work in the community and the world that God has called us to do. So um, thank you for continuing to send in your gifts and join me please in our prayer of dedication. Receive these gifts, O God, with them we offer ourselves. Use us and all that we have to offer to bring a message of forgiveness to those who cannot imagine that your grace is meant for them. Use us and all that we have to offer or bring a message of love to those who cannot imagine your divine embrace might encompass them. Use us and all we have to offer to bring a message of hope to those who cannot imagine a future free from despair. In the name of the one who is both gift and giver, we pray, amen. This is the beautiful time when we come before one another, before God, sharing those things that bring us great joy and also those things that weigh heavy on our hearts. Please use the chat feature to um, lift up your joys and concerns. I would like to pray for all the officers, all the brave men and women who are serving in law enforcement and serving in the military. I'd like to pray for their safety and giving thanks for the, um, the good work that they do. 
Rob lifts up. Rob Sarunk, I hope I said that right, lifts up. His daughter, Amanda Clunk Agnello, who has been diagnosed papillary ductal carcinoma, which is breast cancer. She is scheduled to have a partial mastectomy the week after next. She is in California. Lord, hear our prayers. Rob Cirillo. Cirillo. Praying for Emily as she recovers from surgery. Lord, hear our prayers. And I'm sorry it was Robin. Liz Faust lifts up a prayer for Mary Carroll, recovering from a fractured femur. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to lift up the joy that my baby girl will be 14 on Friday and I give thanks for all the joy that she has brought in to our lives and to everybody else's. So giving thanks for Katie. Lil lifts up her daughter, Ashley, and her husband, Josh. They're expecting a new baby in November. That is such an exciting time of life. Lord, hear our prayer. So I said planting a seed was maybe the biggest act of hope, but I think having a baby is too. So that's hope for everybody. So congratulations, Ashley and Josh. Continued prayers for Dennis. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayers for Lou Zosia in Sloan Kettering, hold on, it's disappearing on me, being treated for a blood condition related to cancer treatment. Lord, for Lou, hear our prayer. Prayers for Connie Umstead. She's 96 years old. She fell and broke her ankle. She's in rehab in Memphis, and her daughter is in Las Vegas and can't be with her. That's got to be so hard on both of them. So, Lord, please hear our prayers. We lift up prayers for all the mental health professionals who are starting to be overwhelmed with the COVID virus and fears. God be with them. Hear our prayers. Prayers for Bethany as they go through a transition. Um, our prayers go with you as your sister churches and let us know how we can assist you. Um, Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up the Domblensky family at the sudden loss of Kim, 55 years of old, a former student of Bill Johnson. Lord, be with Kim's family, hear our prayers. Prayers for Barbara Dalton now in hospice for her husband, Bill and their family. Lord, for whatever time you have ordained, may it be a time of comfort and, and peace for her and for her family. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for perseverance, strength, for a cure, and for patience. Lord, hear our prayers. Another act of hope. We lift up um, the son of Chris and John McGuckin that got engaged to his girlfriend. So Josh and Rachel got engaged. Another act of hope. We give joy for that. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for guidance as we look toward the day of regathering in our churches. God, Please send us your holy wisdom. Hear our prayers. Lifting up a joy for the blessed collaboration of these three churches. It is life-giving. It is amazing. And I think as we seek to reopen, we'll do some more collaborating so we can learn from one another and share our resources as we seek to be able to regather in person. But lifting up the joy of the collaboration. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. I want to lift up prayers for Pastor Young Me, and prayers for pa Reverend Anna Lee as she was able to take a break this week, and, and for the joy of General Assembly, the 224th that concluded, and uh, that we could still meet even in the midst of pandemic, the way that we are worshiping God this morning. Thank you, Lord, for these blessings. We pray all these prayers and the ones that are unspoken in our hearts using the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved churches, Doe Run, Bethany, Unionville. You are so greatly admired by your God. Go forth this week and listen to Reverend Annalee's word. Plant a seed of hope. Do good. Love justice. Be patient. Walk humbly with your God. Amen. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loves us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope. Comfort your hearts and strengthen you for every good work and word this week. Amen. And please remember um, as you are sending in your donations, you can reference the websites and the addresses on this slide. Thank you all so much for being with us this week. We just love getting to worship with you, even if it's not what we're used to. Right. <laughs> so, Unionville folks, we'll have a coffee hour in a little bit, and it's a different link than the worship link. I think it is for all, all the churches. That is also true for Doe Run. So, yes. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome, Diana. Yes, we definitely needed. Ellen, I agree, we totally needed the message of hope. Whew. They're strange times. Thank you, Lisa. They are strange times. And I write sermons for myself. I mean, I've needed to hear it too. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George and Jean. Thank you, Tess and Bob. Well, thank you, Marlo. I don't know how you got the heart there, though. It's pretty cool. Thanks, Dana. It's so sweet. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. We love doing this, and I think yeah. even with the few glitches we had today, I feel like we're getting better every week. <laughs> Just, and it's so good for us to be able to work together. I'm glad that we've worked it out so that we can communicate with all of you this way, you know, and, um, yeah, no matter what comes, it's just this technology is a real blessing. The music was awesome today. Both of those pieces were. Yeah, like I said, all three churches are very, very talented. And that's such a cool thing because we really get to see the other church's music or listen right. to it. Wouldn't get that on a Sunday. So no matter what, it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah, I really like that. You're welcome, Kathy and Glenn. Thank you, Kathleen. Yes, thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you, Marlowe. I can't wait till we can see each other in person. And I know all three churches are working towards that and it will certainly look different than what it did on March 8th, but hopefully we'll be able to, to do that. And like I said, look for more collaboration among the three churches seeking to share resources as we reopen. Um, I know uh, Bethany's got some technology knowledge that they're willing to share with us. So. And the most important thing is that we are showing up to worship God, whether that's online or in person, and we want to do it safely. So it's just great to see the three churches working through figuring out how to make that happen in the best way and doing it together. It's really I attended a, a, a webinar about reopening this week and they the the host of the webinar said that he had changed it from reopening to regathering because he felt that the church had never really been closed so oh i love that that's yeah, i thought that was so good and somehow ann newsness had to make 
little symbols too. Oh, I thought the same thing. I was like, I don't know how to type emojis, and you got the secret. You got the good. And Marlowe did it too. So clearly, there's people with more technology, techno prowess than we have. So. Yeah. It's just funny too that fluky, like me not the sound not working the first time. It was like, man, I thought I was using like my good like. <laughs> So. Hi Ellie. Hi Earl. Ellie, I hope you had a good birthday this week. <gasps> Happy birthday. I hope it was good too. I love birthdays. They're your own personal holiday. Doesn't matter what age you are. It's just a holiday for you. So my daughter's birthday is July 3rd and there we always go down to the Chesapeake house and there's a parade and fireworks and so when the kids were little and they would see an American flag, they'd say, look, it's Katie's birthday flag. <laughs> <laughs> they thought the town was all decorated in red, white, and blue for Katie's birthday. <laughs> That's great. And I'm also the kid that, you know, when the, uh, my birthday is December 22nd. And when the Sunday school teacher said, this time of year, there was a very special baby born and people from all over the world came to see that baby. Does anybody know who that baby was? I was like, I think it's me. <laughs> the Sunday school teacher was like, um, no, we're talking about Jesus. <laughs> Sounds so hard. I'm sure it was fun for my parents to come pick me up from Sunday school that day. It's a good early lesson. Somebody told you then, though, you were a child. <laughs> Hi, Dick and Doris. Yeah. It would be nice if Bill could sing the birthday. Yeah, Mr. Bill wrote a special birthday song. It's fantastic. We'll have to figure out how to do that, Marlo. Maybe we'll have him record it and we can play it. Yeah. Good idea. We could That's do that. A, that is something, knowing people's birthdays just feels like a wonderful way to be connected. Getting to sing. Oh, we got more emojis. I know, these people are showing, now she's just showing off. This is, I have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> so many things to learn. All right, well, I'm going to... Um, go grab my stuff for coffee hour. So Unionville folks, I hope to see you in a few minutes. I will see you soon, Doron. Bye, Doron. Bye, Bethany. Bye. See you guys next week. Love, love, love. And hope. <laughs>